Hi, my name is Bill Rupert and I'm a broker associate with Debbie Halliday Realtors in South Lake, Texas, and a member of the Texas Association of Realtors Technology Committee. The committee is studying mobile technology for realtors. One aspect of that is the challenge of gathering signatures when you and your clients are far apart and far from fax machines and copiers. All you've got is a laptop and a connection to the internet. The technology committee agrees that one of the best solutions is to use the DocuSign e-signature product. The NAR has invested in the company and we realtors get a nice discount. Best of all, it is really easy to use both for agents and for our clients. I really like it. I've put together this demonstration to show you how I use DocuSign in a real world scenario. I hope this demo helps you to see how easy it is to use DocuSign and motivates you to give it a try. So here's the scenario. We have relocating clients from Virginia. They just spent a few days in the area looking at homes. They had to go home before they were able to make a final decision. Now they're ready to make an offer. So we'll use zip forms and DocuSign to prepare their offer and submit it. All we need is our laptop and an internet connection. During the next few minutes, you'll see how to transfer documents from zip form to DocuSign, as well as add extra documents like a seller's disclosure, prepare the contract forms and other documents for signing, send the documents to your clients for their e-signatures, check on the progress of the signing, and finally, create a PDF of the transaction to send to the listing agent. Plus, we'll take a look at how a client goes about signing the document. And here we are in zip forms. There are three forms. We have a one to four family contract. We have an HOA addendum. And we have a third party financing addendum. We're ready to send our forms to DocuSign. We need the file menu to be showing. It's already up, so we can roll over and click on eSign. We click on Sign, and up pops all the forms in the transaction. Unselect any forms you don't want to send, and click on the Send for Signature button. Off they go. The DocuSign website is launched, and here are the forms in DocuSign ready for us to start working on. Let's look at some of the basics of DocuSign before we start getting the offer ready. This is the Prepare Envelope screen. An envelope is DocuSign's name for a bunch of documents that make up a signing package. At the top, we have the Send button to send the documents to the recipients. The Documents button lets us add and delete documents. The Recipients button lets us add recipients. And the Messaging button lets us give the package a name and write a message for all the recipients. Along the left, we have an icon for each page of the package. And on the right, we have different objects that can be dropped onto the forms, including those all-important signatures and initials. Okay. Let's start working on the offer package. An important feature of DocuSign is the ability to add many different kinds of documents to an envelope, including Word documents and PDF files. The listing agent posted a copy of the seller's disclosure online, and I want a copy signed by my buyers to be part of the offer. I click on the button that brings up the documents window. From here, I can add, delete, rename, and rearrange documents. DocuSign thinks of adding a document as uploading it to their site. I'll click on Browse, navigate to the seller's disclosure, and add it. I also have a copy of the client's pre-approval letter, so I'll add that as well. That looks good, so I'll close this window and move on to recipients. Adding recipients is very easy. Click on the button that brings up the recipients window. The window comes up ready to add a new recipient. I'll fill in the client's email address and name. Since these are fake clients, I'll use my own email address so we can see what the client receives. I can put in a little note that will be only on Frank's email. And I'll add Sally and close the window. This looks great. On to the next step. 
The messaging window allows us to give our envelope a better name and write the body of the email that the recipients will receive. Click on the messaging button. Let's give our envelope a better name. I'll write a little note that will be seen by all the recipients. And that's all there is to that. Close the window and we're ready to mark up the documents for initials and signatures. Now we will add markers to indicate where the recipients should initial or sign. This is called tagging the document. The process is simple, but you do have to be very careful to get all the initials and signatures in the right place. We'll start with Frank Beyer. His name is highlighted in orange, indicating that he is the selected recipient. Find the first spot to initial. Drag an initial tag and drop it where you want an initial. Easy as pie. Now watching me do all the initials would be very tedious, so I'll skip ahead to the first signature. I'll drag and drop a signature tag. The addendums are done in the same way. The seller's disclosure pages can be initialed in the same way. However, the disclosure's signature page is a little different. Besides the signature, we need to add a date sign tag. And a full name tag. On the final document, these will show the signer's name and the date they signed. We don't need to do anything to the lender letter, it's just along for the ride. Let's return to the first page and select Sally. I'm going to do some of Sally's tagging without the yellow circle that was added to make it easy to follow the cursor. I want you to clearly see the yellow tab being dragged and dropped, and not be confused by the cursor highlight, which is not seen in DocuSign. And here is the last signature. Well, that job is done. A little boring, but well worth the effort. I've carefully reviewed the package to make sure I have the right person's tags in the right places. I'm happy with the package, and I'm ready to send it to my clients. Click on the Send button, and up pops a final review window. I'm afraid that the Send button is misnamed. It should be called the Get Ready to Send button, because nothing actually gets sent until you push this send button. I discovered that the hard way. The documents are sent. Next, we go to the console where you can review and monitor all of your envelopes. The drafts folder is empty. Our envelope is now in the sent folder with a status of in process. We'll come back later to see if Frank and Sally have signed yet. Now we're ready to see what the client has to do to e-sign the offer. Here's the inbox with the email from DocuSign. I'm a member of the Cindy Rupert team, so it shows as if sent by Cindy. This is Frank's email. The subject is the improved name we gave the package. Here is a message that we wrote that will be seen by everyone. And here's a special note that we wrote just for Frank. The instructions on what to do are straightforward. Let's click the review button and see what happens. The DocuSign website is launched. The client is asked to agree with certain legal provisions and is asked to adopt an electronic signature. After checking both boxes, Frank clicks on continue. 
the documents are shown with a big start button. Frank clicks the start button and the form magically scrolls to the first initial. Frank clicks on that initial and the form scrolls down to the next one. And so on. We'll skip ahead and here we are at the last signature on the seller's disclosure. Now you can see what the signing date and full name tags look like on the completed document. That was the last place Frank needed to sign. He can review the documents or complete the signing. He clicks on Stay and Review. When done reviewing, he clicks on the Complete Signing button at the top of the page. From the completed page, Frank can get a PDF file of the documents, but he just clicks Done and is sent to DocuSign's home page. All done, not hard at all. It's been a while since we sent the offer to Frank and Sally. Let's take a look and see if either or both of them have signed the offer yet. We've logged into DocuSign. The envelope will be in the Sent Items folder. And here we can see that Frank has signed the offer, but we're still waiting for Sally. I better give them a call to make sure there are no problems. It turns out that Sally was just away from her computer for a while and completed the signing shortly after I called. Once again, I'll check the sent items and I'll see that the envelope is now in the completed status. I'll also get an email from DocuSign informing me that the signing has been completed. Now that the offer documents have been signed, we need to send them to the listing agent. We'll create a PDF file that can be attached to an email we send the agent. I'll select the completed envelope and open it. Click on the printable version button. We have several choices we can make. We can have a PDF file with all of the documents, or we can have any particular documents, or all of the documents as individual PDF files inside a zip file. I'll take the first option. Here is the PDF file inside of the Adobe Reader. And I'll just save a copy from here using the default file name. Close all the windows. And we're done. The PDF file with the electronically signed offer is ready to be sent to the listing agent. Let's recap what we have seen. We transferred documents from zip forms to DocuSign and added other documents as well. We prepared the forms for signing by tagging them. We sent the documents to our clients, checked on the progress of the signing, and created a PDF of the transaction to send to the listing agent. And we also saw what the client has to do to sign the document. I was a little nervous about starting to use DocuSign, but once I got my feet wet, I really fell in love with it. I hope this demo motivates you to give it a try.